Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trail Talk. I am so glad you could join us today. We have such a great show planned. We have the current featured artist here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma, Kathy and Jerry Smyers. And they are both um, really outstanding artists in their own right. You can, you'll see that their talents are, they're, they're very different and yet they're both very creative and they make these super pieces of art. And so, um, Kathy, Jerry, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. of Thank course, so we are so glad you guys join us. They're from Wichita Falls, is that right? Well, Holiday, but okay, we're holiday. close to Wichita Falls. Holiday, so um, yes. I apologize. I That's watch, fine. I watch, uh, we only get Wichita Falls news up here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's like a regional thing. We don't get Oklahoma. We don't get Lawton. We can we can get Lawton. Okay. But the other like CBS or that those are uh, Wichita Falls stations. Stations. And okay. so um, I should know where Holiday is because I hear all the Texas counties and yeah, all that the towns and everything. So anyway, enough blabbering all about that. So we're just gonna jump right in here, and I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna talk to Jerry first, okay. and we're gonna look at he. You are a sculptor. He is a sculptor extraordinaire. I'm just gonna say it like that. And uh, you and you carve as well. You do wood carving. Is that right? Yes. So just real quick, how long have you been carving and sculpting? I started out drawing. Drawing, okay. The first week of the first grade. We didn't have kindergarten. Okay, yeah. Yeah. They didn't grab me one day and put me in school. Right. And I saw the teacher drawing something on the flat. Uh -huh. So, I mean, learned later it was not. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I didn't go to kindergarten either. But she let me draw on the blackboard for recess. And <clears throat> this could be a long story. Oh, that's okay. We got time. We got to come to our house riding the horse. Uh -huh. I've never seen a horse before. I'd see my older sister uh -huh. and uh, he put me on his horse and I thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is the greatest thing good. ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I had to draw that horse on the back. And that kick started the whole thing wow. in my life. Uh -huh. I've tried everything to the art world. So you painted? I have, uh, I didn't like it. Okay. I don't like to smell paint. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> but but uh, I take it every art course that they offer that they let me work. Right. But except in a film. But uh, I, I just love to create. Uh -huh. I'm a maker of things, I guess you'd say. Right. One extreme to another life. I've always tried to stay with the Western theme mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. But then again, like the little couple over there. Right. They, I thought if I knew people like that, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. They're from Tusco. And uh, I just had to do something to uh, kind of memorialize. That, uh -huh, right. You know, uh, Jerry, in talking to other artists, I feel like there's there is this thing inside of someone who creates or makes things like you you said, and it's you just have this need to there's get that out of you. Yes, the passion and a need mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so yeah, let's let's. Well, first of all, I'm turning my back, boo-boo number one. Okay, let's look at this piece because you brought one that's kind of in the process of this, being made. And this is a sculpture, yeah, right? This, this is in clay. 
Okay. And it will go to the foundry. All right. Uh -huh. This is like two months work here. And I didn't keep that to it. I wouldn't have had the thing where we got it. Right. But I fell. Yeah, but I need to put one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, I just, I like forming yeah. things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so with the clay, um, is it a, a certain kind of clay that you use? I mean, an artist clay or something? Or yes, can you uh, use just any kind? I really don't know. Kevin, it's for me on the internet of Amazon. Uh -huh. It's called Monster Clay. Monster Clay. Yeah. Okay. And I like it because when it's cool, it's just, you know, real solid. solid. And it's uh -huh. holding its shape. Uh -huh. But you hit it with a source of heat and it turns to liquid. So you got to check your tank. Mm -hmm. And you are, we have a refrigerator at home that's full of these things sitting there. Waiting. waiting for you to for finish oh <laughs> to go to the foundry yeah ah okay but they have to be kept cool uh -huh. and, uh, so but like just by handling it does that warm it up enough for you to be able to change the shape or add uh yes. add a uh, texture to it or something yes and most times i don't go by preferences it's all hooked up by you. Right. And through my thing. Uh huh. And uh, I just, I just, I don't look at photos. Uh huh. For reference. So, so that's a, have, have you, so you said, you told me earlier this was about three fourths done. And uh, so, like, you said you have a lot of things kind of waiting to go to the foundry. Why? Why are they waiting? Is it because it's so expensive to get them cast? That's or? part of it. We have to kind of budget this right. process. And, uh, and the boundary is really slow. And they're uh, fewer and fewer all the time. And their workload just keeps getting harder. And the wait time is longer. Right. So we just, uh, when the opportunity comes up, and I think you told me the other day we we had their um, reception here. Was it Friday night? A yes. week ago. And um, I think you said you take them to a foundry in Fort Worth. Is yes. that right? Okay. Festus Foundry. Fat Festus Foundry. Thank you, yeah. Right. <laughs> Little plug <laughs> there. Um, so uh, I I am always this kind of blows my mind that you would take something you created an art piece and hand it over to someone else to make the finished product for you. Does that ever make you anxious about how it's yes, going to turn yes, out? It does. Mm -hmm. uh, you really have to inspect them. You know, when you get the finished piece out to make sure there wasn't a bump or a, you know. Uh -huh. But they treated me well in there. Right. Do you, are are they kind of artisans in their own right? Is that right? Uh -huh. They do art and they do monuments. Uh -huh. they do, you know, they realistic. Right. Really I can't even know. That seems like really hard work in yeah. that found hot, you know, the all, all those mm -hmm. all those things about that. But Anyway, I love it that you brought this piece that's kind of in the process just to kind of see your, I guess the horse was the thing you saw first and then you thought I'm going to add a Native American to this and, and just, yeah. you know, kind of keep, keep going with it like that. I, it's, it's, it's part of the creative process. Right, right. Well, let's move, let's move, you know, what, is it okay if I just pick it sure. up like this? I'm going to set him over here and let's talk about, um, I was thinking about, did you do wood carvings before you did bronzes? Or did. You, okay, well, let's yes. talk about those. I, I particularly love this piece. Um, oh, these saddles. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like this is a little 
job on the first, you know. This was your first. And it turned out so well, well, you know, I, that was fun. I'll do another. Right. So, you know, three months later, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so this piece, what did you use to carve this? And what kind of wood? It's black walnut. Okay. That's mostly what I use. Uh huh. Um, I feel like I have some more extended product. Right. Black walnuts is going to be pages. Because they're the choice of wood carvers. Craftsmen. Okay. Huh. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. Hats off to you, black walnut. <laughs> yeah, I tried to go through, you know, the time periods, but like this right here, they called it a, a loop seat. Sample. Okay. And it, oh, yeah, it's a, oh, oh like okay. A cowboy to, to the trail. Uh -huh. like uh, the a loop seat yeah, saddle. Like this. Uh huh. <clears throat> but, so what's what is what's the loop part? This uh, whole uh, little straps. Oh, the straps. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Very primitive, very thought out. Uh huh. It worked. Right. And so then when you go around, is this a more modern type saddle then? Yes, or? Uh, that's more like a roping saddle. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I just thought of something. You said you sat on a horse. You'd never seen one before. Did that change? Did you become a cowboy? I did. Okay. So <laughs> there you have it, people. One time sitting on a horse and he's... I married Kathy for her horses. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Now, see, we're getting to the nitty gritty now. <laughs> okay, so this is more like a, a roping saddle, you said. Okay, and then what's this yeah, other this one? This one, trail saddle for driving pleasure. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, do you actually have all these kinds of saddles? She does. She does? I've never owned a saddle in my life. Ah. So he married her for her they horses and her saddles. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and then you just kind of had the vision to just put them all together like this, which I think makes it a really yeah. unique and interesting piece of Western art. They are. They're, they're just a, it's a piece of art. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this... This is a very different kind <coughs> of wood carving. Little lady, uh, just small black walnut. Uh huh. And uh, <coughs> she gives them togwa nut. Say that again. Togwa. Togwa nut. T A G U A, I think. Uh, T A G U A. Okay, yeah. togwa nut. Well, that, and it, oh, okay, okay. And it's white. Yes, they used to call it vegetable ivory. Okay. Because it does it says a nut that comes from Africa. Uh -huh. They uh, do a lot of things with Wow. But it's hard like ivory. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so how did you do all these little like dimpling uh, kind of things? Okay. Okay. So you you did I think we, I got off track here. What kind of tools did you use for the, this well, isn't a whittling oh, situation? I use little, uh, a little car, power tools, carving tools. Uh huh. Yeah, I've got a, like Dremel uh, kind of thing? Well, Sorry. Uh, but uh, maybe a little bit more advanced. Right. Right. Like each, they have, does it have like they little have, heads that switch out right. or, okay. Spinner head. Uh -huh. Most of them are diamond coated. Oh. Then I use a little power chisel. To clear out different parts of it. I, I mean, I think that your work is just really awesome. I, I mean, are well, these like little pieces of metal that you that's, added to? That's silver. Silver? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I'll get a piece of silver wire to this. Uh -huh. I just, I mean, I think it looks great. And this, is this some brass here? No, it's copper. Oh, copper? Yeah. Okay. Okay, 
Yeah. Well, I just think that it's it is a really awesome piece. I'm gonna slide it back a little bit because um let's let's talk about um some of those over there. Like that piece, you know, move that one up here so we can see it better. So tell me about yeah, this one. Uh, this one seems like Native American inspired. Mm -hmm. And it's probably 20 or 30 years old. Oh, okay. Uh, is this some kind of a that's elk Four? antler. Okay, elk antler. Yeah. Okay. Carved the face up in here and uh, it's just all hand carved. Right. And so is this like a like a Native American like painted for Yeah, they mark their horses. Okay. Okay. They call it war paint. Uh, right. And then a the bison here and then the and Eagle? Right. This is tied to all things. Uh, Let's see, all things that matter. All things that matter. Uh -huh. Yes. Where do you come up with your titles? You just that's, think of those two? That's the hardest part of all. I, I bet. I bet it is. I mean, really. Yeah. So this is just, I, I mean, I really like that. Do you have, um, are you Native American? Uh, no. No, you just, you just. My like grandparents it. said were, but. Right, right. So you just um, appreciate their yes. their art, and because they really they make art out of everything. I mean, their teepees were canvases. You know, I mean, their horses were canvases. It's I, I always thought that that was really amazing how they um, were creative like that. All right. So are these is this one wooden or is this bronze? That's bronze. Okay. Okay. And These so two came from the same mold. Oh. I just want to create one to an individual. Uh huh. And this one, you know, it, I guess it'd be a book or something. Right. Right. Yeah. So I just want to stand on. Uh huh. Well, those, I mean, that turned out really, it really is. I just, I am just fascinated by the thought of making clay look like hair <laughs> or, you know, the fur of an animal that, that really, that really intrigues me. And so then this back piece is also a carving that you brought. Yes. Yes. Uh, I call him the high plains drifter. <laughs> that's a good one. And so this is a relief, right? Yes, and that's what they call that. A, probably a low profile relief. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. And this is again black walnut and we have powdered metal and the inlay there. Ah. And do you do all your staining? Yes. And everything too? Yes. Wow. So are you you did the wood carving first and then you started doing bronze? Do you still do wood carving now too? Do you do both at the I same do. time? I do. How long have you been working in bronze? Probably since the 90s. Oh, okay. Uh, in college. Uh huh. That's where I started. Okay. So, did you ever, was your dream to um, just be an artist and support your family with art, or did you feel like it was just more of a hobby or a pastime? How, how did you see that? Self entertainment. Self entertainment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just, I'm curious sometimes about yeah, things like I, that. I mean, I can sit there at my workbench uh -huh. for hours, uh -huh. lost in what I'm doing, and until uh, she comes looking for me. Yeah. <laughs> then you got to put everything away, put your toys away. Um, so this piece, this is heavy, but this is yeah, a I, bronze also, right? Yes. And um, I, you told me that the other day that a lot of people seem to really relate to this piece. Yes, uh, we had it at a show recently and a lot of people walked straight to it. That's, I've done that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just lay it on your horse's back. Well, I've done my job here. Uh -huh. But uh, again, the, the foundry guys are artists. They do, the, they ask me what color I want stuff. Uh -huh. Of course, I chose this. I said, I want you to wear blue jeans. Right. Yeah. 
And so they they yeah. were the ones who created the that yeah. different the color, color for the jeans. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That is that's awesome. It's like they partner with you, don't they? To help your art yeah. take it to the next level, maybe, mm -hmm. or something. And then you have several small, smaller bronzes, even though I'm not kidding y'all, these are little, but these are heavy. Bronzes are heavy. They are really heavy. I can't even imagine like if you had to ship something like this, but I really, I mean, I think you've got it animals down. I, uh, I mean, seriously, uh, your, oh. your animals are just so, I, I'm just, I think that they just look so lifelike. I, I'm just so, that, that bison over there. Um, Bailey, would you mind handing us that horse that's right back over there? I love, I love this one. Is that's, this one of your that's, favorites? That's my choice. Is that your oh, favorite oh, one? That's, that's my choice to look at. Oh, to look at. Yeah, okay. This one, we'll scoot this back a little bit, put him right here. I mean, I think you should see him head on. So they, the found, did the foundry help with the color on this too? Yes, because he asked, he always asked what color. Uh -huh. And I tell him, you know, it's a dark horse. Right. Dark mane. And, and I mean, I don't know if you guys can tell, but they made his nose i can just imagine this how that soft you know how soft their noses are just you know because it's a different color it just feels seems like it should feel different and it's kind of strange how that happens is uh he does this with a certain acid oh okay uh, brushing it on right and then hitting it with a torch uh -huh. and it comes out like that and same thing here he brushes this acid on and well, I say they've got it down to an R. Right, because the eyes are darker and the just this whole the whole mouth area it just really adds to that piece. And I just feel like you you got the personality of this horse. That's what I go. Uh huh. Each animal has its own personality. Right. And I didn't, can't quit until I see the personality. Uh. Do you have one over here that you're thinking of? Uh. Well, let's let's show the the little uh, couple that you mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, I'll put him over here. I'll switch him out. This is your. Um, you said this was um, like a dust bowl. The dust bowl farmers. The dust bowl uh, farmers. Okay. And, uh, Thank you. I just uh, you know I was born right on the tail end of the big depression. Okay. And the dust bowl was going on. Right. And I knew people like this. And I knew how they dressed, and so I just had to kind of try to memorialize them. Mm -hmm. And I've got expression. Yes, you do. I mean, you really do. This guy, bless his heart, he just looks worn out, <laughs> which I mean, I feel like that's the way people felt during that time mm -hmm. the depression, the dust bowl. I mean, man, it was hard. It, it was hard. hard. Yeah. But um, yeah, I really, I mean, Grapes of Wrath, right? Isn't that what you think of whenever you see that? I just really, it just, I, I mean, and also I love how the colors, you know, kind of, I, right. um, what do they call that when it fades? Patina. Uh, the patina, okay, yeah. Um, I, I just really love how that has, I don't know, kind of goes into a different color down here. You know, by their feet, mm -hmm. like like it's like it's the red Oklahoma dirt. That's yes. what we call it around yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I really like your Dust Bowl couple. They are poor poor people. They're kind of sad, <laughs> but you got, but you feel that's the thing. You feel it when you mm -hmm. look at them. You feel that emotion yeah, that you they're feeling. They can't put a hat tight. Right. Right. Yeah. That would be the wrong thing. Um. Well, let's see. Let's thank you, Bailey. Let's let's look at this one here because I think this one's a, a really fun one too. Is this an experience here uh, that you've had or yeah, it's kind of good. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about this one. Uh well, you got a green broke broke coat here. Okay. Yeah. Tell me, tell me what's a green broke coat? I mean. I kind of know, but let's let's tell the viewers. She's off her mama. Uh-huh. 
and she started with well they'll trainers will start with a saddle blanket you know and uh, trying to get her accustomed mm -hmm. to eventually wearing a yeah, saddle eventually she'll wear that saddle but you don't trust her for a while right so they're green broke until you trust them uh-huh so that's the way i see it right right have you ever broke a horse mm, no no uh, kathy mm. <laughs> kathy's she, she's she a real life cowgirl huh ah this was her little horse shorty oh um, oh how sweet and does it look like shorty kathy absolutely oh <laughs> that's awesome what is that's what a sweet thing for you to be able to make for her so um so you just kind of like what what's your very favorite thing to cat to sculpt horses i'll look to that for horses mm -hmm. yeah. so um you've been basically interested in art your whole life um do you feel like you had any kind of a influence on Kathy becoming an artist? Uh, probably. Yeah. I told her when we married, I said, pull your hat down tight because we're going to run through our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but anyway, uh, we we uh, gave away all of our horses, mm -hmm. and uh, she was looking for something to do. Right. And she always, well, I'm getting into her story now, but she always was interested in saddle blanket. Oh, okay. Like saddle blankets laying everywhere. Uh -huh. So she wanted to learn how to weave saddle blankets. That's and that's where before. it all began. And she found the place to start up at Los Ojos, New Mexico. Okay. She found this school on the internet. Aha. Uh -huh. So after several trips up there through mm -hmm. the years, here she is. Here so, she is, a very accomplished weaver, wouldn't you say? I would say. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, how about if we take a few minutes and we'll uh, talk to Kathy about some of the, her pieces then. Go ahead. All right, Jerry, thank you very thank much. You. Thank and, you for having me. Oh, yeah, I'll holler back at you. You'll be up here again in a minute. Okay, um, so we're going to kind of move around a little bit. Maybe we'll come to this table right here first. So I'm going to turn this light. So it's a little bit more. Y'all bear with us. We'll figure this out again in a minute. Here we go. Okay. All right, Kathy. Okay. Come over here and um, we'll, we'll okay. stand here in front of your blanket. So were you inspired by Jerry? Absolutely. Okay. Tell us about that. Because, okay, um, you, you were a cowgirl. Mm -hmm. And... So why were you a cowgirl? Tell me about that. Did you, you just grow up around horses? Yes. Was it just you were in the saddle from Little Bitty or? From Little Bitty, I was riding my dad's roping horse. And then actually he eventually gave the horse to me and I tried to make a barrel horse out of him. Uh, it didn't work out, you know? Right. But I gave it a shot and it just, that just always been a part of my life. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So then Jerry mentioned that you guys reached a point where you're going to not have horses anymore. Yes. I'm guessing that left a void. Big. Okay. And so then Jerry is always piddling with piddling. That makes it sound like <laughs> he's Wait, not a real artist. That was a terrible thing. I cannot believe I said that. Okay. Um, Jerry is creating making all the time yes. right yeah and um you thought you'd like to join in on some of that sure, sure. and so saddle blankets were kind of your inspiration which i mean how fitting 
right? Yeah. I mean, something you're so familiar with, something that you've been has been a part of your life and kind of still keeps you with that horse connection, probably kind of, you know, in your yeah. own heart. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So tell us, so you, you found out about this um, school. I, mm -hmm. I think this is interesting. So tell us how that all came about. Okay. Uh, my mother did oil paintings and she was very uh, talented in that. And I appreciate it a lot more now than I did at the time. Right. But anyway, uh, and then with Jerry's artistic ability, I can't draw a stick figure. Yeah, I can't. Mm -hmm. And I can't knit either. So, but I got on the internet and I ordered a rigid heddle loom, okay. which is a small loom about uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. And to see if this was something I would really be interested in before I spend any real money. Right, right. And yes. so I made a lot of scarves for people. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. I like this, I uh -huh, can do this. Uh -huh. So I got online and found this school in Los Ojos, New Mexico, uh, Tierra Wolves, and went up there. And it's so New Mexico, their building was well over a hundred years old. Mm. Um, Adobe walls that are about this, about that thick. Wow. With the uh, wood plank flooring, uh, wood burning stove for a heater really yeah. stepped back in time absolutely right? to when this weaving was probably like an everyday part of their lives absolutely and they still uh make a lot of items for sale okay. up there they raise their uh shepherd's lamb they raise their own sheep and the sheep are churro sheep mm -hmm. which are the sheep of choice for the uh, navajo weavers uh the wool is exceptional ah, so okay. uh i had always thought wool was itchy uh, right, right you know until i started in on all this uh -huh. and this is so different from what i call manufactured yarn mm -hmm. that you get at the yarn store this is you know, kind of raw more, yes. like a raw product this is hand spun and dyed with natural dyes, uh -huh. no chemicals. Uh -huh. And uh, they raise the sheep. They have the operation from the ground up, right. literally. Right. Wow. So uh, what? I mean, how it was an education for right. me. Right. And how cool that that's that's where you got your start. That it was mm -hmm. that kind of I don't know, kind of a holistic approach to weaving. Mm -hmm. You know, I yes. mean, just from the sheep all the way through to the finished product. I mean, that's that's immersing yourself in, yeah. in it. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure that that was inspirational. Very nice people, wonderful instructors, very patient. Uh -huh. You know, so. Yeah, so did you start out then making things like these blankets? Yes, we started out on a, a three by five and the real grand weaving uh, is uh, your basics or your stripes which mm -hmm. uh, you can see here. Okay, so real grand weaving, what does that mean? Is it just a style or? Yes. Kind of a, okay. Yes. You have your Navajo weavers. Okay. And they have their style and the real grand weavers have their style. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I'm following now. Uh, this is new to me. I'm learning. <laughs> and I am a student too. And I, I, <laughs> okay. I, 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 I learn constantly. Uh -huh. Okay, so, um, and this is a rug weight, which it's heavier. Right, thicker. okay. Uh -huh. And um, so anyway, their style starts and this with is, the stripes. And, and so the freedom that you have, I guess, are your colors, your, um, the width of the stripes, kind of your oh, yeah. design that you lay out, just the whole thing can be whatever, whatever you Whatever you come up with. Uh -huh. And then and then you come back and add your fringe. Actually, the fringe is the okay, so oh, I see that. It's woven into those yes, those uh, stitches there on the it's edge. It's actually the structure of this. Oh these are, okay. are uh, oh, these are the things that go up and down and then the warp. Uh-huh. And okay. then the color is the weft. Uh, warp and weft. 
Got I'm that. learning so much. <laughs> yes. The warp and the weft. Okay. Okay. And they typically tie off uh -huh. by, for your fringe. Right. Okay. Ah. Then you cut it off of the loom. Uh huh. That makes so much sense. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So this is, I mean, just a beautiful earth tone. Yes. Um, just a lovely. Would you ever use this as a rug? No. This is it this is art. I mean, you said it was rug weight, but I'm thinking. Okay, we do have is, one that we use as a rug at the house, and it was one of my first ones that I finished after I came home from my first class. And my edges are not straight, and they go everywhere, so it, okay. It, it's okay. Oh, to be okay. on the floor. Okay. <laughs> that one is okay. So how how many? times did it take you then to I didn't even think about making the edges nice and straight and all that how long did that take you to I'm guessing a couple you're, of years. you're an artist so you have a, a bit of perfectionist in you mm -hmm. so a, a couple of years worth of creating weaving and weaving uh -huh. and just repetition keep doing it till you figure out what you're doing wrong ah right so did you go back like continuing education kind of thing? So, yes, uh, the Rio Grande loom is a very large loom. It would fill most of your space here and you stand all day ah. because the pedals, you stand on the pedals and you shift to shift the uh, shed on the on Okay, the, so what's the, the shed? The shed is the area that opens up that you send your shuttle through. Uh, okay. It has your okay. door. Okay. 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 Yeah. So you have to stand on that all day and and that gets long. Mm, I know? bet it does. Yeah. So um, my three by five generally ended up to be like a three by four because I would get tired. <laughs> get tired before you got that last foot on there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, and I would go back and uh, the first year was just the basics on the stripes. Uh -huh. Uh, one a, thing about I, I want to point out it's as beautiful on the back as it is the yes, front. It's, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, yes. it's not like there's a there's no knots. Yeah, yeah. Except like a like a tapestry or whatever when you right totally back. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it's uh, when you change out your threads, you just fray the end of one of both, put them together keep weaving. Ah, they okay. lock in mm -hmm. on themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing about rugs is don't fold them, roll them. Roll them, okay. And that keeps them from uh, creasing, destroying the, the thread. Okay, okay. I'm going to, Tina, you want to take that, or Jerry, well, Jerry, take that over there. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, <clears> so the <throat> second year, we went and got into more geometric mm -hmm. uh, Wow. Patterns. This seems a lot more geometric. I mean, this and seems, and you have to, I mean, I mean, you don't have to, but you have made it like a mirror image. Yes. Even the geometric yes. shapes. Wow. That's what I enjoy. Uh -huh. Really kind of that challenge that I'm sure it's a, do you, do you have to like draw it out? Do you sketch I, it out? I do. Uh huh. I I can't. I mean, I can't imagine how you would do it without doing that. But and you, and you do so many inches of whatever, and and you have to maintain your uh like the sharp maintain points. your points. Uh huh. The points. Yeah. I mean, they are very sharp, and they have to go on a particular work oh. to maintain the sharpness of them. Wow. And the conformity. So when you do one with this many colors and mm -hmm. the geometry and all of that, is it a much longer process? No, not no. necessarily. The longer uh, tapestries are the longer. Oh, okay. Okay. And which you have those too. So yes. we're going to check those out yeah. here in a minute, but we're going to look at another rug first. So real quick though, you would have to go all the way to five on something like this, wouldn't you? Yeah. To get well, it all the way. See, yeah. I, I had a, a, a one week constraint uh -huh. to make my blankets in class. 
Oh, I and see. I don't spend eight hours a day at it. I, I can't. Mm, right. You know, so yeah, sometimes they take me a little bit. <laughs> well, understandable. I mean, it's worth it's worth your time because just the beauty of these things is is just it's really something. I love these. Thank you so much. Okay, now this is an example of a real grand uh, style weaving. This is called the Chamayo pattern. Okay. There are, I've heard that to the Chimayo. best of my knowledge, uh, seven patterns in the real grand style weaving. Uh -huh. And this is a, a Chamayo pattern. And I've, I'm going to do each of the seven patterns. And this was my first one. So. Oh, okay. So you have more. Are you working on some right now? Uh, not of these. Uh -huh. I'm working on some other pieces that I I need to get finished. Ah, yeah. Are, but how many different? Do you use the same loom, loom right? Correct. To do the tapestries that you generally use? no. Generally no. Okay. Uh, this tapestry back here, I use my large loom for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, I did that one sideways. Yeah, which I think, I mean, if you stop and think about it, this was a mental challenge in my in my mental capacity. I'm thinking this was a challenge. And then I went and took a class from a lady who did uh, tapestries she had learned in France, and she did them backwards. Really? From the back rather than the front. And oh. that, that just hurts my head. To right. That. Yeah. 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 That's like a Schrodinger's cat kind yes, of thing or absolutely. something. But this, yeah. I mean, because you are, the threads are going through this way. Yeah. The warp threads are still mm -hmm. this way. But the weft, yes. I got it. The weft yes, is this good. way. Yes. And so you had to change colors mm -hmm. and keep your, the, the picture part, this is where Kathy takes art and weaving and meshes them together into her painting, I guess, and weaving, I, I would call it. And you just mesh them together and create these beautiful this, tapestries. Beautiful. And they're, I mean, this is, this is wildflowers. This, these are wildflowers. And I mean, I just think that this is and then I'd, I'd have to stand up and look at it from the side to see right. where I was going. Right. I'm, I'm just really intrigued by this piece. I okay. think it's, I awesome. think it is, I mean, man. That was my first tapestry. Kathy's brain power. This is volumes. <laughs> She's speaking volumes in brain right here with this one. Um, all right, I'm going to hang this one back up and then we're going to. Okay, uh, let's come over here and look at this, this tapestry right here. So would the back side of this one look different from the front side? Yes. Okay. I did this, I'm not very much of a purist in my methods. I, I combine what, if I learn it, I'm combining it. Okay. Okay, uh -huh. so. Uh, this is more of a tapestry piece in that it, I have a lot of the loose ends on the back side. Oh, I don't okay. weave them back in uh -huh. because there it doesn't lend itself to do that right very well. Right. Well, this one, uh, my husband and I, he, we looked at this and he was really, he said, I, I feel like I see like the mountains and, and then, you know, of course it's called Antelope Canyon. So then you know, you can the the different colors you used create the the I guess like um, depth. yes, thank you. The depth of you know what we're what we're seeing. Antelope Canyon is in Arizona, uh huh, and there are I've never been there. Okay. I did look at a photo for that. Uh huh. Uh, but as Jerry reminds me, it is your impression of what you see. Right. If you want it perfect, then go take a picture. Right. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of have to 
remind yourself. Well, he reminds me yeah. because I'm an accountant by trade, uh, and so everything's supposed to have its place. That's where that perfectionism really, I mean, accounting is a very perfectionist kind of right career. Wrong. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It balances or it doesn't. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, so this Antelope Canyon in Arizona, it, it struck me because of the beautiful tones of orange mm -hmm. and yellow mm -hmm. that are in this canyon. And I'm hoping to do a, a series of these uh, and what canyon mm. photos right that sounds really so. that would be really a great yeah thing to do yeah yeah for sure um so one thing you said um that this is supposed to be your impression of uh, and um i think if if you viewers if you'll uh kind of allow me i i feel like your work is impressionistic in that up close, you see the stitches, like the impressionist paintings, you see the brush strokes, but when you step back, your eyes are allowed to see the picture because of the way the colors, the different colors and everything, it, it makes your eye see the whole picture. And so I feel like her, we, her weaving is like impressionist art. And um, yeah. anyway, yeah, oh, well, yeah, I just, I mean, that's my uneducated <laughs> opinion. But uh, anyway, I, I just, I really, this piece, especially my husband was really, he really liked Good. looking at it and trying to enjoy it. Oh yeah, he did so much. So um, uh, let's, let's bring some of those pieces over here. And this is so well lit. I think we're just going to, is it okay to lay this on sure. this rug? Okay, sure. Now, I like this one. I mean, anybody from Oklahoma, Texas, we all know these pump jacks, right? Yes. I mean, this is kind of bread and butter. And um, so, again, is this from a picture or did you do this from your rock? Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, I was raised in the oil field mm -hmm. in Hobbs, New Mexico, and we have sandstorms out there. Mm. And uh, so I was going to enter an art show and they had a topic. It was all pieces have to be related to the oil field. I said, well, how can I weave something that's oil field? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, sandstorm at sunset. I love it. I mean, this is, this is, this is part of the beauty of, um, the land, I mean, it's it's a part of the landscape out here. Oh yeah. South, Southern Oklahoma, North Texas, even over New Mexico. Um, the derricks, the pump jacks, but it's it's like the, just the shape, the, you know, you see it in the distance. It's the, it's the shape of it. You know what that is. You don't, you don't, I don't have to be standing here and see the movement of this thing, but I know, you know what it, what it is. I know what it yeah. is. I know what it looks like when it moves. I know what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And just the, the heat and the just, I, I mean, I think yeah. this is really just, this tells a story, you know, this really, I feel like this would really touch people who are familiar with this kind of life and, and these yes. scenes. It, I would hope. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I think it definitely does, Kathy. So, um, how did how did that go in the uh, the competition? I won the first. Yay! Yes. Awesome! That is so thrilled. Right? Yeah. Were there, was it in a the weaving class? Was it divided like that? In it, uh -huh. yes. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the exact category. That's all. And I came. No, oh, well, uh, that yeah, that's you know, it's. I was just thrilled. Oh, right. So we have to get jury in in the first place. Yes. You know. Yes. So it, do you like to do competitions like that? Sure. And so um, it challenges me. Mm -hmm. I, this is the thing I love about artists. They're never satisfied with where they are. They love and they challenge. They want to just it, 
just push themselves and see what else can I do? What else can I make? How can I do something different? I mean, like Jerry, the one he's working on right now, he's got this great horse. You know what? I think I'm going to add a Native American riding on that horse. I, I'm going to push this even further. I'm going to see what else I can do. You know, and I just, I love that part of an artist. Just they're, just go for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I love, so yeah. have you, like, if you're dissatisfied, can you, I'm, it's not rip it out, but pull it, pull out the threads, or is it just easier to start all over? Or do you just push through and try to make it into something else? I try, okay, so if I go along and I appear and I say, I don't like this here, I'll take it all out mm -hmm. down to that point and start again. If I'm up here and I don't like it down here, that's just too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I am not taking this apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't blame you. So how many hours? For that work? guy? Uh -huh hours um gosh 60 wow probably wow so it's an investment of your time yeah. you know i mean of, of course you're getting that opportunity to just be creative and see what you're what you're in product how that's going to turn out but i mean 60 hours it's not like you can say oh well i'm not happy with this I guess I'll take 60 more hours and do something, you know? And so, so you're really, you're really intense on, on it as you go along, I'm thinking. I, I have friends in, that do paintings and they can sit down and start to finish Monday to Friday and they're done, you know? And very few of my projects will be done in a month. Either. Right. They're generally several months to get something accomplished. Right. You know, and, yeah. and if they make a mistake, well, they, oh, well, I'll just paint over that down there and it'll be okay. Right. But I, I can't do that. I, yeah. It has to be right the yeah. whole way. We had a, a leather artist. Same thing. But yeah, you, I mean, if you put a color, just a little color or, you know, you stamp something in that leather. It's there. It's there. And there is no taking it out. Oh. And so, yeah, he... Don't mess up. Yeah, he was like, you know, you got to get creative sometimes. So like a little ink thing, he made it to a bird, you know, or something, <laughs> something like that. So no, it was, uh, but yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I love this one too. This one is one of my favorite ones that you brought. And is this how you attached it to your canvas? You tied it? Tied it yeah. on there. Oh. So I tied it at several points uh -huh. to distribute the weight. Oh, okay. I, and, I, and Jerry's trying to help me with this, trying to figure out ways to hang them. So that, um, yeah, so that it doesn't sag. Right. When you show them at art shows, you know you're limited by size and they have to be ready to hang. And uh -huh. so I'm trying to learn to comply with their requirements. Mm -hmm. and I think we've got it down. Oh, I, yeah. One. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. So I like this one because you can see her signature really well on it. Can you guys see this little K up here? Kathy um, weaves her initial into her pieces. I think that's so cute and clever, right? Isn't that great? Um, but this one, remind me what this one's called. It, the uh, shimmering water. Shimmering uh, waters. I think that's shim, right. Shim. Is that right? Shimmering, yes. yeah. shimmering water. Yeah. Shimmering water. And I mean, right? Can't you see it? Can you see the reflection of the sun and feel that the water is moving? I mean, you created movement mm -hmm. with yarn. I just, that That's fascinating. It, it yes. fascinates me to be able to do that. So yeah. when you go to like these shows or competitions, are there, is it, is there, similar work out there to what you're creating are they oh my gosh they, it, it's a whole new world really yes i'm just on the tip of the iceberg oh you know, these wow. these people uh are amazing what they can do wow so I, are I there like, a long way to go are there classes like 
as far as your skill level or yes. experience. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Yes. I like, I've, I've heard of like master. Yes. Something. We had an artist here, the, the one who did the scrimshaw. Yes. And then, yeah, I think he was like, what was he called? A master something. I think he was, he was in that class whenever he would compete. He was in that. So yeah, that that's, yeah, I can see that that, that would do that. But I just, I, how fun was this one? That was a fun piece. I needed to, uh, the tapestries kind of get nerve wracking. Uh -huh. And so I have to do something fun and that was just fun. And I just started going, right? You know, I had no pattern. I had no anything. I just, I wanted bright colors, mm -hmm. I wanted fun. And that's what- I nailed it. <laughs> that, right, then she did, she just nailed it with this one. So um, this one, is a weaving was was it mm -hmm. done on the big loom? But can you yes. so you can kind of customize what size you want yes. to make on your loom? Yes, absolutely. Huh. Okay. So how do you put like? Well, you just have extra long that you have to trim off. Is that right? On the oh, I forgot what the warp top. warp on what the warp the length of the warp is always the same. Is that right? No. When you no, you can make it shorter. Right, I make it whatever length I want it to be. Oh. So like when I started out with this, I knew what size I wanted it to be because I wanted to show it. So I mm. made it there were a some size that, that would fit uh -huh. a uh, canvas. Uh -huh. And then I figure out, there's a mathematical formula to figure out how much warp and weft you, you're gonna need. How long have you been weaving? Just since 2015. Just so seven years, mm -hmm. seven years. Wouldn't you say that she's kind of a natural? I mean, mm -hmm. seven years in, and these are the kinds of pieces that you're able to create, Kathy. I'm I just, I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. I hope that the next seven years, it'll just improve that much more. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so are, have you retired from being an accountant? Yes. Okay. So. This is another thing I think, viewers, I want you to take note of this. This sounds like a, um, a, a passion that Kathy has that is like a post-retirement mm -hmm. um, thing. Your life isn't over when you're, you retire. I mean, you're, it's, you're just getting started. And I just love that so much. I love how encouraging that is and, and just how important it is that you find meaning and ways to um, you know, express yourself and and just you're you're looking seven more years down the road and even oh, yeah. further than that oh, and yeah. I, I just I love that I think that that's I your mindset is great wouldn't you kept these guys be so much fun to hang out with okay let's see um, I'm gonna we're gonna look at a couple more these two over here that are um, more picture or is, is this one a tapestry or weaving it's a tapestry yeah weaving <laughs> oh yeah this is your no, um, this actually is is just weaving oh, okay okay um so this is this, what is this is this a place or is this just something you have in your head it's my little brain mm -hmm. and it uh i wanted to do something in grays oh okay you know the monochromatic I mean, you know, it's sometimes it's uh, soothing. Right. Yes. Yes. Very much. So. Um, and, and like total opposite of the sprite one that we right. just looked at, but equally beautiful, you know, in its own right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> can you find my initial? Oh, she's got her initial in yeah. this one somewhere. Yeah. Where's Walt? Did you find it? Oh, yeah. Right, right over the top of that right there. Uh -huh. Oh, right. oh, look at her sneaky. Not to be competitive. Right, yeah, <laughs> right, Bailey. She just surpassed me in this right here. She's got this little K. Are they always laying on their, on uh -huh. the back like that? Yeah. That yeah. is, that is really great. I okay. love, I love that. Um, but, no, I just wanted to do something in, in gray. Uh -huh. and, uh, and you, you did, you is. made something very beautiful. I really love it. Um, it is a very soothing piece, but it's also, I mean, I like to look at mountains. I like to 
you mm -hmm. know, see just how the sky sits behind them and just, you know, the different, you know, they're three dimensional, but you don't always, you can't detect that three dimension. Mm -hmm. You know, they look two dimensional when they're off in the distance. I, when you're a distance away from it, I like looking at it because what's around that corner? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. So, so you put, yeah. is there just a little bit of a story in your work yeah. that, that you like to imagine when you're creating it? Or is there just a an idea in your head that you think, I want to see that thing no. in front of me? I don't want to be that rigid. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, and Jerry is the one with the art training, you know, and one thing he's taught me is that um, it needs to be whatever the person sees in it. It doesn't need, you don't need to say, I want you to see this as such uh, and such. You need to see it and interpret it for yourself. Right. Very nice. Good lesson, Jerry. Very yeah. good lesson. <laughs> Your art teachers would be so proud of you. <laughs> okay. We're going to look at this one right here. One more. And this one is, oh, there we go. Forever. It took forever. Forever. For really? Oh yes. Why did well, tell tell them the why yarns? Uh, I do really use the churro yarns, but because this is the piece I started in the class that I took from the lady who had trained in France, and we use a much much finer, uh, oh. smaller yarn, uh -huh. and so uh, you know to do that little bit right there from the white up to the line probably took about four hours. <gasps> wow. Yeah, because Ooh. it's the because the yarn is so, so thin. thin and to fill that in all the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so it wow. just took forever. My but, goodness. This is the one, this one is the one that's very impressionistic to me. Okay. Up here, up close, you can get lost in you know, the ridges that are out versus the, and then the colors that are in. But when you step back, I hope you, the viewers can see this looks much like a drawing or painting or something, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, <laughs> I, I realize it took you a while, but I'm going to say, well done. I'm glad you, you stuck it out because mm -hmm. what you made is something just very beautiful. Oh, I won't quit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not you're not a quitter huh yeah. you're gonna keep on pushing so if that took four hours that took a lot of time. A time yeah a long time my goodness probably about eight months off and on oh wow wow yeah, so. yeah I bet you would have to walk away oh yeah sometimes yes yeah yes. well um I just I you guys it viewers You've seen a lot of their, the pieces that they brought here for us, but I, you just really need to come and experience this in person. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you, they, their art will be here through the end of June, right through the end of June. And so you have two months to still come in and get to see what they have. Practically everything that we've shown today is for sale. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to just come in and see it, come in and see it and pick out what you want and take it home with you where you can enjoy their creations in your own home. That's one thing. Jerry's uh, work, that it's small. And uh, so these are the right size that you could uh, put on display in your home. And um, especially if you're just like a Western art collector you mm -hmm. would really love his piece he's got long horns and so we didn't even look at everything so anyway I want to encourage you guys to come here Jerry come get back on the camera with us for a minute I'll let you stand there by your lovely wife how about that okay okay um so uh anyway Jerry and Kathy thank you so much for being our guests on trail talk today I mean, I, I think people have really enjoyed being able to kind of walk through what you've done and with you and, you know, just sharing everything with us. Um, you guys be sure and come by and uh, visit 
us, we, Kathy and Jerry aren't always here. So um, you'll have to, you know, see one of the rest of us here, but we can show you where their art is. So anyway, guys, when it is time to, um, what do you guys, are you going to say me, come watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry loves the movie it here. It will rain. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. It does. So anyway, um, yeah, you guys come here and see us at the Heritage Center. We're open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5 and Sundays 1 to 5. And uh, we'd love to show you around. And guys, when it's time to sign off, we say happy trails together. So you guys okay. ready? Sure. All right. We'll see you all next time. Happy, happy trails. trails.